You followed all the steps. Your timing was impeccable and you've given the plants everything they could possibly need. In short, you've done everything right with your tomatoes, yet the worst has just been revealed. Seemingly perfect fruit terminating in a deep dark secret. That's right, we're talking blossom end rot. Eventually, it happens to all of us, and the cause is super simple, yet 99% of the time, it's completely misunderstood. In today's video, we'll examine what blossom end rot is, what causes it, how can we deal with it, and what steps can we take to actually prevent it. Look, getting blossom end rot after all that work is disappointing. I get it but it's not the end of the world. We can fix it. We can fix it without expensive chemicals or expensive hardware. The best fix though is prevention. So we best get going. Blossom end rot, abbreviated to BER for short, is not a disease, fungus, or even pest related at all. Amazingly, it's purely physiological. In simple terms, it's the end result of a lack of calcium to continue to properly build those cell walls of the fruit of the plant. During the late spring and early summer, tomatoes develop at a rapid rate. To achieve this astonishing growth, they use up a ton of elements and compounds, and one of those being the important macronutrient, calcium. Along with magnesium and sulfur, calcium is one of three secondary macronutrients that are necessary for healthy plant growth. And like we said, calcium is used by the plants to build their cell walls. Without it, those tissues distort, grow improperly, and give the impression of being rotten. Certainly, a soil that's low in calcium can contribute to blossom end rot. But honestly, this is almost never the case. You see, calcium in plants is entirely immobile, meaning the plant can't spend energy to move calcium around to where it needs it. Thus, plants rely solely on transpiration and the movement of water within the tissues to piggyback that calcium and get it to where it needs to go. Enter blossom end rot. As the cells that are literally the furthest away from the root system not to mention being the fastest growing new tissue on the plant, the first location that you notice a lack of calcium is at the ends of the fruit. And when you piece it all together like that, it makes perfect sense. Anything that slows or interferes with water uptake and transpiration is going to cause a calcium deficiency in the plant, usually in the fruit, manifesting itself as blossom end rot. So, now that we know the cause, how can we fix it? or better yet, prevent it from happening in the first place. As we said, calcium deficiencies in our soil are actually quite rare. The calcium is there, just that the affected plants are not getting it. And the issue always devolves down to water, or lack thereof. Honestly, I've seen it too many times to count but inconsistent watering early on during the fruit's development is almost always the cause. Not enough water to transport and supply calcium to the rapidly expanding fruit will almost always result in blossom end rot. The thing is though, this leads us to watering too frequently, sometimes even every day, and this can actually make it worse for two reasons. One, Shallow, frequent waterings train a plant's root system to just grow near the surface. Without a deep, networked root system, that plant is going to be highly susceptible to intermittent drought and extreme heat, making them a prime candidate for blossom end rot. Second, a plant's root network and its above ground growth should always be complementary, a correct ratio of support that goes both ways. The rapid spring and summer growth will quickly outgrow a deficient shallow root system, where even in the presence of adequate moisture, not enough can be transported fast enough to supply enough calcium to
to stave off blossom end rot. It seems crazy when you're watering all the time that water can actually be the problem. So in the end, there's three main things that you can do to stave off blossom end rot. And the first is to water thoroughly. And not only that, but also less often. Make each and every watering count. Train those roots to go downwards, search and work for their moisture, and create a more resilient plant. Remember, calcium might not be hanging around near the surface or even where the roots are. By forcing it to create that vast network of roots below ground, the plant will have a better chance at grabbing the elements, compounds, and nutrients that it needs to stay healthy. Second, mulch right away, as soon as you plant. Mulch not only keeps the temperatures in those upper soil layers more even, more importantly, it also keeps the moisture steady and locked in. Even available moisture at all times is the best way to prevent blossom end rot. And our third and final way to prevent blossom end rot is to never over fertilize, especially with nitrogen and especially just as the fruit is setting. Excess ammonium and other ions interfere with the calcium ions availability and uptake. And if your plant is already on the fringe of getting blossom end rot, well, this can be what pushes it over the edge. And as if this weren't enough, you have to remember that blossom end rot isn't just for tomatoes. Because peppers can get it. Cucumbers can get it. And you know zucchinis can get it. All in all, a pretty common problem, but with a straightforward solution. So let's go ahead and recap those main points to make sure we got them all. As an affliction that affects our fruiting crops in the final hour of their life cycle, there's few things more disappointing than blossom end rot. A lot of effort and hard work lost at the last minute, usually with little time to start over. Commonly described as a lack of calcium to finish building the cell walls of the fruit, this is only half the story. Physiological rather than disease or pest related, blossom end rot's best treatment is prevention. While calcium deficiencies in our soils are quite rare, intermittent drought at the absolute worst times can be pretty common. Treatment, or should I say prevention, is quite simple. Deep, thorough watering, but less often, is the first step. Next, ensure a thick layer of mulch is applied right at the time of planting. Train your plants to build an extensive root network and keep the environment around them steady and optimal, no matter what the weather is doing above. Fertilize less during the fruiting stage or better yet, not at all, as these nutrients can compete with calcium for what the plant can uptake. Solve these three areas of maintenance and your blossom end rot issues will be a thing of the past. Without a doubt, blossom end rot is a total bummer. A lot of work down the drain, literally right before the harvest. But it's not a disease and not only is it treatable, it's also preventable. Hopefully all the tools and insight that I've given you here today makes blossom end rot a thing of the past in your gardens. Hey, happy growing guys, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Hey, thanks so much for watching guys. I appreciate the support more than you know. And if you're getting value from these videos, please like and share them to spread the word and help your fellow gardener to grow better.